Hello everyone, welcome back. Today's video is gonna be a little different. We're gonna be dealing with this Tamiya uh, super stock motor, the RZ. This will also work for the BZ and the TZ. Um, these are great motors, awesome silver can. Um, wish we would have had these back in the day when we were kids. Uh, it even surpasses the Tamiya Technigold in RPM and power, so pretty neat. Anyway, uh, what they do not have are ball bearings. You could get a glimpse in there of a bronze bushing on both sides of this motor, uh, which is kind of weird considering there's such a high RPM motor. You would think that Tamiya would have put some better, uh, maybe some ball bearings in there. But that's the way they roll. Always plastic bushings and such for the lower end models. Um, so anyway, today... We're gonna change those bearings out. I see there's a lot of videos on YouTube that kind of show you some of it, but not all of it. And I don't know why. There's some kind of, you know, secret uh, code or handshake, if you will. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna get right into this. So we pretty much just need an arbor to pull the new bearing into place. I'll show you what that does later. You need your your handy uh, cross wrench, uh, a screwdriver, Phillips. Uh, and these bearings, uh, these bearings are uh, 1 8 by 3 8 by 5 30 seconds. These are ceramic hybrid um, and there's a model number there, which you can see. And uh, they're a little expensive for two bearings. I forget what I paid for this group, but something like 40 bucks for like four of them, uh, which is kind of steep. But I do run these a lot. Um, and this motor is actually used. Uh, I have a brand new one right here going in my son's car. But we're going to dive into this one. This one's got some mileage on it. So we'll see what it looks like inside. Let's get right to it. So you want to get yourself some sort of a bucket to put this stuff in. You want to release the spring, um, the uh, brush spring. That's just going to come out like that. And what I like to do is put it in that side. You wanna pull these brushes out slightly. Do not touch the end of the brush where it makes contact with the armature because you're gonna leave oils from your finger and your hands on there unless you're wearing gloves, but I'm not. So don't do that. You can touch this, this area, not a problem. All right, we're gonna get this other spring out of here. Left and right, don't mix them up. You want to pull your brush out just slightly. All right, so now let's get the screw out. Now, oh, one more thing. There's a timing mark on here, which you can see right there, that notch. So it's one, two, three, four notches. It's like sort of in between. Uh, I don't know if that's adjustable. I wouldn't really worry about it too much, but it's worth noting. So when you take it apart, you get that back in alignment. There's also... There's a metal shield that I had on my other motor. Let me see if I can get a photo of that. Yeah, it's still there. Okay, so we're going to be taking that off as well. All right, so unscrew. Unscrew the housing. We're going to lift this off. And we're going to put that down. Okay, one thing we want to note pay attention to now, there are uh, washers and shims that should be on here for spacing this armature now, this one happens to be a little crusty but you do not want to mix them up because they set the uh, backlash or the end play in this uh, in the uh, motor in the uh, motor housing okay so we got to get this out okay so we have this, it looks like it pulled the washer, the washer's still stuck inside. So we can leave this right there for now. And yeah, so I'm gonna get that out with a Allen key. Uh, there it goes. Okay, so that's the top washer. 
but we do not want to mix that up. So I'm going to get that out and I'm going to put that right back on so I do not lose it, forget it, etc. Okay, so there's the there's the bushing down inside there in the motor housing. All right, so we are going to take a look at this side now. And there's another washer there, which we need to extract. There it goes. So this goes, oh, there's two. There's a bronze, a bronze washer and a silver washer. The silver was uh, towards me. The bronze was further away. So that's the way I'm going to restack it. So we're going to go put that back on there and put that like that. No, oh, I lost the other one. Okay. Okay, so the easiest one to get out is this bearing first. And you can just use something that's a slightly it pops right out. See that? I just use a drill bit. Nothing special. And it popped the bushing right out of there. So you can see it's clear, clean, nothing in there. There it is. I'm going to clean it up real quick. So I really can't tell if there's a lot of wear on it. It looks pretty much the same as the others that I've taken apart. So we're going to get our bearing, our bowl bearings out, I should say. Right, and I will put a link in the description so you can find out where these come from. Try to get them yourself. But we are just going to push this bearing down in there, get it to sit and rest. And I'm going to use my arbor tool. Now, one thing I want to point out is this is a stainless steel screw. A stainless steel washer and stainless steel nut and there's a reason for that it's because the motor has some really powerful magnets and if you do not do this uh, you're gonna be angry with yourself because it's gonna be any steel screw is gonna get attracted to that magnet and you're gonna fight trying to get this thing together all right I'm looking for a washer which I have discovered Okay, so I put the screw through there. I actually used the, the bearing, the bronze bushing that came out. And I'm just gonna put this nut on here. So I'm basically creating a sandwich. And I'm going to tighten this up. And it's going to pull that new ball bearing right into its home. Okay, I'm going to remove all that. I'm going to remove the tools. And you can see the ball bearing is now seated in its, in its proper place. And it is all the way down. And no gap is underneath. It's not crooked. Okay, and so that's all I basically is the arbor. It's a screw. Stainless, washer, stainless, the bronze, which is non-magnetic, the other washer, which is stainless, and then the stainless nut. And uh, awesome. That works out. So now we have to get it out of the other side. And that is pretty much the same. We are going to tap that out with the drill bit again. So I'm going to knock that out. Sorry, I didn't do that on camera, but it fell right out. There's not much holding this, this bushing in. All right, so installation is reverse. Uh, I've seen some people putting grease on here. I don't think that's necessary on these bush on the uh, ball bearing. Uh, you got to kind of get it down in there and fight with it because she is magnetic, and you have to kind of get it seated somewhat like that 
so it's just kind of hanging out. All right, and then we're gonna put in our screw arbor, and I'm just going to feed it. So we're gonna install the arbor and put our nut on, and we're going to tighten this screw until it won't go any further, and bottom out, make sure we are completely bottomed out. And then we're going to loosen this all back up. And our bearing should be seated all the way. Check for any gaps. Looks like we're all the way down. And we're good. Just feeling it with my finger make sure it's completely flat it looks good so we can start to reassemble and I did go with a longer screw this time so I could get a larger allen wrench so this is a allen cap metric screw and I put some bushings and stuff to take up the slack and the extra space so like you know because it's not fully threaded so you just got to find a cap screw um, because the Phillips doesn't give you enough bite to pull the bearing in but as you can see, it worked out well. The bearing is fully seated. All right, so we'll get this stuff out of the way. And we can put this back together. Okay, so we are gonna let those washers fall off the bottom. We still have our washers on the top and we are gonna put the armature in and get that in there make sure everything rotates it's a little difficult to rotate it because it wants to it's not held in stasis by the rear cap okay remember these washers are specific to each side um the bronze was facing inward our shiny side out and we are now going to put our end cap on and like i said there was not really a specific place but it kind of falls right back into the spot it was where you can see that uh, zero for timing is lined up exactly where it was before again i don't think that it matters um per se and if this little metal clip falls off just remember that it goes there and that's the position that it's in so the l is against the electronics um we do have to make sure the ring hasn't pulled away sometimes it's a little difficult to get the screws back in so we're going to try and gauge the screw if not i'll have to do a little macgyver and we can do that by push this ring up with a small allen key it's so very carefully just pull that push that ring up into the screw Okay, and we're gonna do the other side. Again, same thing. I wanna just push that ring up slightly just to get it pushed up against that screw so when it starts, it doesn't push it down. And she's tight. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Bearing seated, everything's back in place. Our brushes are where they're supposed to be. We can put the uh, brush springs back on. The curved part sticks into the slot on your brush. So you put that right over the post. Let's see if we can get a little closer. Okay, so that sticks in the back there. And uh, I guess I should tell you that this is a good time to wear safety glasses because if the spring lets go, oh, anyway. Okay, so if the clip goes back in its spot, we'll do the other side. Okay, so we put it first on the post. And then make sure it's in the groove or the slot that's on your your uh, brush 
all right and put your clip back and uh make sure that your spring is pushing that brush against the armature you want to make sure it's not in the wrong spot um make sure that's tight that's tight okay and you don't have to touch these screws that's for the actual brushes to replace them uh and i'm not changing brushes today so no need for that so that's pretty much the whole thing um again i just used a screw to i could probably tell you what this is hold on it's an m3 um and you probably need about uh let's say 20 maybe 30 millimeter long and an allen cap screw you know allen cap head and so you can get a fatter allen wrench in here and uh really get some muscle on it so that it pushes that you know seat the bearing so anyway once the bearings are in uh you can see that there's the same amount of end play that was in the motor before uh and that motor is now good to go and since it's a used motor i don't have to break it in or anything like that so if you're doing a new motor you should probably follow the break-in process and the procedure for that I know some people stick them in water uh i don't do any of that i just plug it in and go because that's what i'm about so anyway that's going to be going in our dt03 uh the aqua shot aqua shot i should say uh and my other super stock came out of my rising storm so that's going to be going back into my rising storm and this other one's going to be going into my son's car and this is all set up with the ball bearings as well so i hope that helps you if uh if it does hit that like button and uh subscribe so i'll be throwing out some more of the tamiya stuff as it comes up we have a whole bunch of stuff uh parts that we're going to be upgrading on this car we're going to try and do some videos for that in the winter when there's nothing else to do all right so thanks for watching hit that like button all right bye bye